welcome back to another Final Fantasy VII tutorial video. Last time we looked at how to defeat Ruby Weapon without even pressing a single button on your controller, and I have a bunch of other videos in mind thanks to all of your requests. But for now, I have to do something spooky. Because after all, it's Halloween. So what better time to talk about the completely screwed up story of Vincent Valentine, the closest thing Final Fantasy has to a kid in a costume. This video will be a discussion of Vincent, the role he plays in the game, the secrets of his past, and basically everything you could ever want to know about him. So sit back, chomp down on your Halloween candy, and enjoy an in-depth look at Vincent. Vincent Valentine is one of the two secret unlockable characters in Final Fantasy VII, the other being Yuffie Kasaragi. In order to get Vincent to join your team, you must open a safe in the Shinra Mansion in Nibelheim by using clues hidden in the bottom left-hand corner of the main room to find numbers hidden around the mansion. The first number is found on the lid of the chest found in the left section of the second floor. You have to open the chest first, and then hit the OK button again to read the numbers. The second number is found next to the piano in the top left room of the first floor. The third number is found two-thirds of the way down the corridor on the right portion of the second floor, where there is a creek in the floor. The final number is actually in the list of clues. It is invisible and can only be selected by moving the cursor under the final option and hitting the OK button. Once the combination is found, right to 36, left to 10, right to 59, right to 97, the player must input the combination into the safe on the top floor of the mansion within 20 seconds to reveal the lost number boss in the Odin materia. Once lost number is defeated, the player will also receive a key to the mansion's basement and Red 13's ultimate limit, Cosmo Memory. The player must then walk down the stairs to the basement and use the key to unlock the cellar where Vincent is sleeping in his coffin. After choosing the options, talk about Sephiroth and who are you, the party leaves and is interrupted by Vincent asking about Hojo. Vincent then joins the party and can be used for the rest of the game. In battle, Vincent uses a variety of shotguns, pistols, rifles, and revolvers and has a long distance attack making him useful in the back row. He is also one of the best magic users in the game, having one of the best magic stats and the most maximum MP of any character besides Ares. Besides his magic capabilities, he is mediocre in all other stats and has the worst maximum HP stat in the game at level 99. Vincent's starting level is calculated by adding 3 to the party's average level at the time he is acquired. Although most of Vincent's weapons are weak, two of his weapons, the Long Barrel R and the Sniper CR, boast 255% accuracy, which can be combined with Deathblow to create powerful regular attacks. In addition, his ultimate weapon, the Death Penalty, raises his strength depending on how many enemies he has defeated, and can become so powerful that he can kill Emerald Weapon in a single shot. For more info on that, check out my Overflow Glitch video. Vincent also has a different strange glitch in Final Fantasy VII, known as the Vincent Mug Glitch. If Vincent uses Mug while wielding the Short Barrel, Winchester, Long Barrel R, Sniper CR, or the Death Penalty, and another party member's attack is already queued up to be next, the animation of that next attack is skipped, but the results are still calculated. This means if the attack after Mug would end the battle, the game doesn't take the time for the enemy's death animation. Using this glitch, a player can skip the long summon animation of Knights of the Round, or any other long attack, making it very useful in competitive speedruns. What truly sets Vincent aside from other characters in the game is his limit breaks. Unlike the other characters, Vincent's limit breaks allow him to transform into monsters, changing his attacks, his stats, and refilling his HP. However, once Vincent is transformed, you lose all control of him until the battle is over or he dies. Vincent only has four limit breaks in the game and gains his limit breaks faster than the other characters. His final limit break, as well as his ultimate weapon, can be found in Lucretia's cave, a cave located behind a waterfall near Mount Nebel. It can be reached with the submarine by traveling through an underwater cave or a golden chocobo. The player must visit the cave on disc 2 and talk to Lucretia, then revisit the cave on disc 3.
Although we don't know where Vincent was born, he was born on October 13th, 1950, which of course happened to be a Friday the 13th, making Vincent 57 years old during the events of Final Fantasy VII. At the age of 27, Vincent was a member of the Turks, which back then was the Shinra Electric Power Company Department of Administrative Research. He was assigned to supervise the Genova Project and fell in love with Lucretia Crescent, a scientist and assistant to Gast Faramus, who later becomes the father of Ares. Lucretia realizes that Vincent's father, Grimor Valentine, is the same man who sacrificed his own life to save her, so in order to avoid that awkward conversation, she decides to give Vincent the cold shoulder and have sexy time with Professor Hojo instead. Lucretia becomes pregnant, and Professor Hojo, being the great guy he is, decides to infuse her fetus with Genova's alien DNA to further the research of Professor Gast, who mistakenly labels Genova as a Cetra, one of the ancient protectors of the planet. This leads to Lucretia giving birth to Sephiroth. Meanwhile, Vincent gets all up in Hojo's face because he disagrees with the use of human test subjects, especially Lucretia, and Hojo responds by shooting Vincent in the chest and using his half-dead body for more experiments. Lucretia saves Vincent by infusing his body with chaos-tainted Mako and a materia called Proto-Materia, which was theorized to have been made by the planet to control chaos. Because of this, Vincent gains many supernatural abilities, including his ability to transform. However, Lucretia becomes ill because of the birth of her alien baby Sephiroth, and Vincent turns into a pile of self-pity due to his inability to save her from her sickness and decides to lock himself away in a coffin for 30 years. Because of this, Vincent is technically 57 during the events of Final Fantasy VII, but has the physical appearance of a 27-year-old. Vincent wakes up once during this sleep to help the Turks fight Avalanche in Before Crisis Final Fantasy VII. Also, Zack Fair finds Vincent sleeping in his coffin during the events of Crisis Core. Thirty years later in Final Fantasy VII, Cloud wakes Vincent up and talks about Sephiroth, which leads to Vincent throwing another pity party, realizing that the son he failed to stop from being born is now terrorizing the world. Before the party leaves, however, Vincent decides to join them in hopes that he can get revenge on Professor Hojo. Near the end of Final Fantasy VII, he does get that revenge as the party kills Hojo on top of the Sister Ray in Midgar. The party can also optionally run into Lucretia in Lucretia's cave, or so it's called even though the game only refers to it as question mark question mark question mark. Here, Vincent relives all of his memories. Lucretia says that she moved to the cave after giving birth to Sephiroth in hopes that she would die there, but cannot because of the Genova cells in her body which make her practically immortal. She asks about Sephiroth, and Vincent lies to her by saying that he is dead, so that she'll never know that he's trying to destroy the world. However, at that time, Lucretia knows that Vincent is lying. If the player leaves the cave and comes back, Lucretia will be gone, but Dirge of Cerberus reveals that Lucretia is actually encased in a Mako crystal because she feels guilty for Vincent's past. To sum up Vincent and Lucretia's relationship, Vincent throws a pity party because of Lucretia and sleeps for 30 years, and Lucretia throws a pity party because of Vincent and encases herself in a crystal. Three years later, at the end of Dirge of Cerberus, Vincent returns to the cave. He thanks Lucretia, and as he exits, a tear can be seen rolling down her face, meaning that she is actually still alive inside that crystal. In that cave. Forever. During the events of Final Fantasy VII Advent Children, one year after Final Fantasy VII, Vincent hears word of Sephiroth's impending rebirth, and tells Cloud about it after saving him from Kadaj. Marlene also mocks him for not having a cell phone. He then helps the team fight Bahamut Sin and asks Tifa where he can buy a cell phone. Additionally, Denzel asks Tifa who Vincent and Yuffie are, hinting to the fact that they were optional characters in Final Fantasy VII. Vincent also tells the party that Cloud can fight Sephiroth alone, and therefore is the sole reason we can all enjoy the one-on-one -on -one fight scene with Cloud and Sephiroth at the end of the movie. During reminiscence of Final Fantasy VII, Vincent calls Cloud with his new cell phone and tells him Yuffie has no right to call it. Vincent also appears in many other games and has an expansive line of merchandise due to his multiple roles in multiple games. Although an optional character in the original game, Vincent is one of the most pivotal characters in the timeline and is the only character from the original Final Fantasy VII party to be the main protagonist in another Final Fantasy VII title. 
Original drafts of Vincent include different versions of the story and many different jobs of Vincent prior to his 30 years sleep, including horror researcher, chemist, and detective. He was also depicted to wield a scythe instead of a gun in an early artwork. One of his early story drafts shows him as a detective working on supernatural cases which usually end up being bogus. In this draft, Vincent has no idea that he can turn into monsters, and when he does, he is even more surprised than the other characters. There were also plans to have him retain his form after fights, have different dialogue depending on his form, and be a more suave character who would flirt with the females in the party. The Final Fantasy games also keep a running gag about Vincent being a vampire. Vincent isn't a vampire since the game's story very clearly states that he is a human from Gaia who is experimented on. But Vincent also wears all black with a red cloak, acts with deep unhappiness, has pale skin, red eyes, has various forms, is virtually immortal, sleeps in a coffin for 30 years, and if that isn't enough, he is seen with a glass of red liquid next to him in Dirge of Cerberus' opening scene. Vincent's theme is called The Nightmare Begins, or The Nightmare's Beginning, and is played several times throughout Final Fantasy VII. Vincent is voice acted in Dirge of Cerberus and Advent Children by Steven Bloom, who has voiced tons of other noticeable video game characters such as Ares from God of War and Tank Dempsey from the Call of Duty Zombie series, anime characters such as Senjuro from Dot Hack and several different Digimon including Metal Kabuterimon, animation characters from popular shows such as Ben 10 and Regular Show, and most importantly, Tom, the host of Toonami. That wraps up our in-depth look at Vincent Valentine. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you would like to see a video like this about your favorite character, comment below and let me know which character I should do next.